And this verse of the Quran is understood from a hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari. A Sahabi, Sayyiduna Abu Sa'id bin Mu'alla radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was praying salah, he was reading namaz, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa called him. A Sahabi, a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu this is in Sahih Bukhari, this is in Sahih Bukhari. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ya Abu Sa'id, O Abu Sa'id, he was praying salah, he continued with his salah. He continued to pray. After completing the salah, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, Allahu Akbar. I called you Abu Sa'id. He said, Kuntu usalli ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I called you Abu Sa'id. He said, but ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I was reading namaz. I was offering masala. Now this, here you will understand. Akhi, I read namaz. Zakat, Hajj, Ibadah, everything. Why respect the Prophet so much? Now we will understand what is more important. What is more important? Namaz or respect of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, Kuntu salli ya Rasulullah. Sahabi said, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I was offering my namaz. I was offering my prayer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Alam yakulillah istajibu lillahi wa lirrasooli iza da'akum. Have you not read the Quran? Allah says, respond to the call of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he calls you. Now this is in Sahih Bukhari. Rasulullah said, have you not read the verse of the Quran? Do you think that my call and the call of Allah is different? Do you think there are two different calls? When the Mu'azzin calls you for Salah and when I call you, when I tell you to come and do something for me, do you think there are two different things? You think Namaz is more important than my call? This is in Sahih Bukhari. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alam yakulillah. Does Allah not say in the Quran, Istajibu lillahi wa lirasooli iza da'akum. Respond to the call of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he calls you, I called you and you didn't come. I called you and you continued with your Salah. I called you and you continued with your Ibadah. Is Namaz more important than my respect? Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him his adab. This was the understanding of this Quranic verse given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is tafsir of Quran by the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This happened, it didn't happen once. There's another narration. In Sunan al-Tirmizi, in Sunan al-Tirmizi, a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ubay bin Qab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he was praying salah. He was offering salah. And Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala narrates this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kharaja ala Ubayy ibn Iqab. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Ubayy ibn Iqab. Now what does this mean? In the first hadith, one may say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't know that he was praying. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him. And then he informed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I was praying. Even though the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then mentioned the importance of salah. But here, the hadith says, Ubayy ibn Qab was praying and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to him. Which means that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him praying. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Ubayy, Ya Ubayy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him. Now, Faltafata, then he turned. And he knew that this is the voice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faltafata. He turned in the direction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was praying. Then he thought, I'm reading namaz. I'm offering salah. He continued with his salah. Now the hadith says, وَخَفَّفَ And he made, he made haste in reading namaz. He did takhfif in salah. He quickly offered his salah. So man saraf ila rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then after completing the salah quickly, then he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqala rasulullah, and he gave salam. He said, assalamu alayka ya rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wa alayka salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and may salam be upon you. Ma manaaka ya ubay an tujibani iza da'utuk. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ma manaaka ya ubay. What prevented you obey? What stopped you obey? From what? An tujibani is da'utuk. Ma manaaka, antujibani is da'utuk. What stopped you from coming to me when I called you? Ubay bin Qab radiyallahu ta'ala and he said, Inni kuntu fi salah ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I was offering salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Afalam tajid fi ma awha Allah ilayya anistajibu lillahi wa lirrasooli iza da'akum. Do you not find in the Quran what was revealed upon me? Allah says in the Quran, respond. 
to the call of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he calls you. This is the adab taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Meaning namaz is important, but it's not more important than the respect of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the basis of these ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the ulama have given a principle. They say that if someone is offering salah, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa calls them, you must leave your salah and attend to the call of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you do not continue. It's not permissible to continue with your salah if the Prophet sallallahu calls you. Now, some scholars have said, but this is not the speciality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because we know that if someone's committing theft or if someone, if a blind man was to fall in a well and then, or if you know that someone was, was dying, then you must leave your prayer and you must help them. If your mother calls you, there are many other ahkam. So what is the speciality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in this? You understand the question? What is the speciality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in this meaning you can leave your prayer the other cases also in which you can leave the prayer so what is the speciality of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this that the speciality is mentioned imam aini rahmatullahi ta'ala he mentions this in umdatul qari imam aini rahmatullahi ta'ala he says wa qala sahibu tawdihi sarraha ashabuna fa qalu min khasais an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam annahu law da'a insanan wa huwa fi salati wajaba alayhi al-ijaba wa la tabtulu salatuhu Imam Aini Rahmatullahi Ta'ala says that, and this is the mazhab of the Shafi'is, the Shawafi ulama, and Sahibu Tawdih, the author of Tawdih, he says that our ulama have said, if someone is offering the salah, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calls them, they must leave the prayer, and then attend to the court of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and what is the speciality of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this? The speciality is that your namaz doesn't break. Your salah doesn't break. You know, if something else is happening, you break your prayer and then you start your prayer again. You break your prayer, you're offering Zohar prayer. Yeah, if someone's offering Zohar prayer, they, they pray two rakahs and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa calls them. And they go to the Prophet sallallahu Okay, if, if they're praying Zohar prayer, four rakahs, after two rakahs, something happens in which it is permissible for them. Something is being stolen. Some, some, some goods are being stolen and they break their prayer because of that. Then when they will come back, they will start the prayer all over again. Yes? But if you're offering your salah and you pray two rakahs of Zuhr prayer, a sahabi is praying two rakahs of Zuhr prayer and the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa calls him. He goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Assalamu alaykum ya Rasulullah Immediately, he has to go and attend to the call of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He will go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says to him, go to the shops, go to the market and buy some, uh, some fruits for me. He goes to the shop. He buys the fruits for, for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. He comes back and where will he start his prayer from? He will continue after the two rakahs. Why? The ulama say when he attended and when he acted upon the hukum of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even though he turned from the direction of Kaaba, but he was now heading towards the Kaaba of Kaaba. He was he's now heading towards the Qibla of Kaaba. So he, when he turned from the direction of Qibla, his namaz didn't break. Because your namaz breaks if you turn from the direction of Qibla. But this is the Qibla of Qibla. And that is the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa This is why the ulama say, when he goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he gives salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he is not addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In reality, he is in his namaz. He is doing ibadat. He's talking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It is like he's offering his prayer. He's not worshipping the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because obeying the hukum of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is obeying, is acting upon the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, adab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is ibadat of Allah. So when he goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa not only that, the ulama say, whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells him to do, that will be considered to be namaz. He goes to the shop, he goes to the marketplaces, and he buys something, he says, give, uh, take 10 dirham, he says, no, no, no. It's for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'll give you five dirhams. The bargaining that's taking place, even that is namaz. He's talking to the shopkeeper. He's reading namaz, and he will come back and he will continue from the second rakat. This is the speciality of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is the adab that is given in the Quran. This was the tenth verse of the Quran teaching us the adab of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Istajibu lillahi wa lil Rasul izadakum. Respond to the call of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When who calls you? When he calls you. 
when he calls you because the call of rasulullah is the call of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the adab of sahaba alayhi muridwan the adab of the companions of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and remember brothers if we learn the adab of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the practices of the companions of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we will have no doubts and even the companions that will come after first the quran the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to respect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was the understanding of the companions. The companions did not consider Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be a common man. The famous hadith in Sayyid Bukhari, the Miswar bin Makhrama radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates that, um, and, and, and Marwan narrates, qala inna, qala inna urwata ja'ala yarmuqa ashaab al nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqal, qal fa wallahi ma tanakhama Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nukhamatan illa waqat fi kaffi rajulim minhu. فَدَلَكَ وَجْهَهُ وَجِلْدَهُ Urwa says, Marwan narrates, and Miswar bin Makhrama radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, they narrate that Urwa says, when he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he observed the adab of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How the companions would behave in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, فَوَاللَّهِ by Allah, مَا تَنَخَّمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نُخَامَةً إِلَّا وَقَعَتْ فِي كَفِّ رَجُلٍ مِّنْهُمْ He says, I did not see once that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم cleaned his nose. When Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم would clean his nose, when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would, would throw his phlegm, the companions would not allow it to fall on the floor. They would, they would, they would catch the phlegm of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and what would the companions do? And remember this. What did the Sahaba do? They would catch the phlegm of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. They would rub it on their face and they would rub it on their body. They would rub it on their face and they would rub it on their bodies. This is in Sahih Bukhari. And he says, فَوَاللَّهِ مَا تَنَخَّمَ He says, by Allah, this was the practice of companions of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. That whenever the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would clean his nose, whenever, whenever the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would throw his phlegm, the companions would rub it on their bodies. Allahu Akbar. Whenever the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would order them, ibtadaru amrahu. They would act upon the hukum of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Whenever the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would do wudu, the companions of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم would fight each other to gain the barakah from the water that would come off the body of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. To get the water. And then that is in Sahih Bukhari. This is the adab of Sahaba alayhi muridwan. It would strengthen the memory of Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala. The flame of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They would seek barakah from that. Let alone the zat of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Even the flame of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is our wasila in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith of Sahih al-Muslim, Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was having a haircut. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was having a haircut. And the companions, Atafa. Now the linguistic meaning of this is as if they were doing tawaf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We don't say that they were doing tawaf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That's the literal meaning of the hadith. Linguistically, they were going around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Why? To catch the Mu'e Mubarak. This is a hadith in Sahih Muslim. They would not allow the Mu'e Mubarak, the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to fall on the floor. They would take barakah from the hair of Rasulullah Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala narrates this. And this is in Sahih Muslim. This is the adab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if someone says, but now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away, you see, is the adab the same? It is the same because that's how the tabi'een respected Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who didn't see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Sabit bin Bunani radiallahu Sabit al-Bunani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He's a tabi'i. He's a tabi'i. He has seen, he's a student of Anas bin Malik. Anas bin Malik is a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Sabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says, whenever I would meet my teacher, Anas bin Malik, who is a Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says, فَأَخُذُ بِيَدَيْهِ He said, I would hold the hands of Sayyidina Anas bin Malik. My teacher, Anas bin Malik. And then he said, I would kiss his hands. I would kiss his hands. You know, sometimes people say, okay, we will kiss the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but not other than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Not other than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Only the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not the Shaykh, not the teacher. Now here, the Tabi'i is teaching us the adab of a Sahabi. Anas bin Malik is not a is not Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is a Tabi'i, he's a Sahabi. And Sayyidina Sabit radiallahu ta'ala says, "Fa'akhuzu bi yadayhi." I would hold his hands, and then I would start kissing the hands of Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala. And then he says, and "Then I would say that these are the beautiful hands, huh?" Kaffan, Masad, Kaffan, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, why shouldn't I kiss these hands? These are those beautiful hands that touch the hands of the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So the barakah was transferred. The barakah came from the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the hands of Sayyidina Anas bin Malik, and from the hands of Sayyidina Anas bin Malik, Sayyidina Sabit radiyallahu taala anhu, he takes the barakah. This is after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had passed away. When people go to Madinah al Munawwara, what happens? They bring the tasbihat from Madinah al Munawwara. They bring dates from Madinah al Munawwara. A lot of people they think, but why do you respect them? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has passed away. Okay, if Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was physically present here, then we would respect the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But those things which have some link with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, why do you respect that? This is the practice of Sayyidina Abu Aliya. But this is one example. There's many, hundreds of examples I can give from the hadith. But because today's lesson is from the Quran only, these are just additional things. This is from tafsir, some basic tafsir. Everything that we mentioned, everything other than this is from the Quran. Sayyidina Abu Aliya radiyallahu taala anhu. Once Sayyidina Anas bin Malik, a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he gave him an apple. He gave Abu Aliya. Who is Abu Aliya? Abu Aliya is a tabi'i. He's not a sahabi. And Sayyidina Anas bin Malik gave him an apple. He kissed the apple. He rubbed it on his face. He rubbed it on his body. And he said, Tufahatun, Masat Kafan, Masat Kafan, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, May be Abi, may my father be sacrificed for this apple. For this apple. Why? He said, Why shouldn't I love this apple? This is that apple that touched the hand, which touched the hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the adab taught by Sahaba Alayhi Muridwan. This is the understanding of the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how they understood the Quran and this is their teaching. This is how they taught the Tabi'een Alayhi Muridwan. Ten verses of the Quran. Tilka Asharatun Kamila. These are ten Kamil verses of the Quran that we have given to teach the adab of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accept this mehfil wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد